substitution. Oh. Maybe not quite, but it'll be close. Okay? Um, now, uh, I'm willing to spend a little time today because I don't think it's going to take, well, I, I'll schedule how I want to go and I'll be finished by the end of the period. I just have a question. Like, with some of the substitution stuff is like cosine squared x, that kind of stuff. I don't know if the parties are going to memorize how to do that. Okay. Uh, yes, it makes total sense. Uh, now, uh, that cosine squared and sine squared, uh, you should have the blue sheet with you to do those. I also noticed the author a couple of times he says, remember, or something like that, that you have to use this. Uh, if I give that to you on the test, I will ha either have it on the test, or I'll just tell you this way. If I do it, I will have it on the side uh, of a few few of those. No. It, maybe you only need one, I'll probably two, two or three, not more than that, because there are only about three of them. Okay? Uh, and I don't think I'm going to do that one. But at this point, it's still game. Okay? Because those are kind of, kind of hard. Um, the other one is this. You'll notice I have not done inverse. I have not done the inverse uh, derivatives. Um, I'm thinking of starting to do one or two in class, but they are pretty challenging. But part of it is just so you, you spot them and then you can probably do it. Okay, next question. Anything else about um, doing with substitution? Should we go over one or two? Yes. Okay. Now, um, I did, we, I, I just reassigned a few of them the other day on page 364. Is there anyone in that group? Yes. 38. 38. I just love that one. I think we did, did we do that yesterday? Yeah. I think we did. But let's just do it again. Because I know how you do it fast. In fact, I know we did it yesterday. And, um, uh, okay. Uh, 38. Because it has all the kinds of ingredients, and what Hope was saying a while ago in terms of that sine, cosine squared has nothing to do with this problem. This is not one of those problems. So, so we have this nice little integral from zero to pi fourths, and uh, we have sine of x up here, and down here we have cosine squared x uh, dx over here. Okay, now. Um, I'm going to probably teach you something a little bit extra with this thing too today as we're going along. Um, I don't know what this function looks like drawn out. It could be interesting drawing it out and seeing what that area is. Okay, but I'm going to work a whole different problem that's going to have the exact same area. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use u substitution and I'm going to make u equal to what? Yes, cosine x. The derivative of this is going to be du equals negative sine x dx. dx. Okay, now while I'm still at it here, I'm going to do this too. Here is x and here's u. When, and here is zero, and here's pi halves. Force. Force. Pi force. Okay? Now, when x is zero, when x is zero, what's u? One. One. And when x is pi force, it is equal to square root of two over two. And I'll just write it this way, which I did yesterday also. Okay? Any questions about this point? Okay, now I'm ready to get going. I'm looking for this. I don't quite see it, but I get close. If I put a minus here and a minus here, I've got it. That is now a du. See, right here, it says it is. Okay, so that's du. This here is 1 over u squared. And now this is a minus, and I'm running from here. It's a u thing and not an x thing anymore. I could leave it as an x thing, but then I have to change this <laughs> process over. That's a little bit of work. This makes it easy. Uh, 1 to 1 over the square root of 2. Got it. Okay? Now, this antiderivative is going to be um, a minus 1 over u. With me or not? Because this is u to the negative 2. It's antiderivative. You move it up by 1. So minus 1 all over minus 1. Okay? And now I have a minus 1 off the outside like this. 
and this way, and now I go from one to this, uh, one over the square root of two, okay? Now, uh, these two negatives cancel each other out. And so this becomes one over, one over the square root of two minus one over one, which gives me the square root of two over uh, minus one. And that's the answer. Now, this is a rather interesting function. This one, I don't know what that curve looks like, but this curve looks like this. I think it runs this way, okay? And we're gonna figure out from one square, square root of, one over square root of two to one. This little area in between here is what we're looking at. And that little area is the same as the area we have up here. Yes? Um, do you have to put x into a table like that and find your value for u? No, you don't have to. If you don't want to, you can leave it like it is, mm -hmm. like this, go zero to pi halves, and then instead of, we got to this point over here, yep. you put one over uh, cosine x dx then, mm -hmm. minus zero. That'll work. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, although this, this book pretty well dominant, it does this almost every time. Okay, anybody else? have one that you'd like to look at in terms of that group? Yes? 43. 43. Okay, 43. Uh, that's a nice one, but I didn't assign it. And I can do it, but I'd rather not right now because there's a lot of fractions in there. You notice the bottom one. It's a fraction with a square root with a denominator. And that, a little time consuming. Okay? Yes? 48. 48. Okay. Now that's one like Hope was talking about, where you have to change. Um, uh, it says we have cosine squared theta. Yeah, I know it's 8. We'll have that in a minute. Okay. You, uh, no, let me just do this and I'll plug it in. Thanks for pointing it out, though. Uh, this is going to be equal to 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta over 2. You want to put an 8 here, and I'll put a 16 over here. Okay? Okay? And um, now, okay, that's all I have to do, I think. So now I'm going to evaluate that thing from 0 to pi over 4, like this. And then I have 1 over 2 plus cosine 16 theta over 2 d theta. Okay? Now I'm going to take it a, a one more step and then I think I'm going to quit. Okay? What's the antiderivative of this? F of X over 2, right? That's this. What is the antiderivative of this? Sine of 16 theta. Oh, Alrighty. Why is it 32? Well, you've got the chain rule operating here. And so we need to have that 16, and maybe you have to use, use substitution to do that. Some of us don't, some do. Okay, because I know that the cosine of 16 theta like this, its antiderivative is going to be the sine of 16 theta over 16. Now I'm going to take this a minute and see if I guessed right. What's the derivative of that? What's the derivative? of uh, 16, uh, uh, sine 16 theta over 16. Well, we take the derivative of that, which is cosine 16 theta, that's over 16 here, and then I have to do chain rule, which is 16. And these 16s cancel, and I you notice know, I'm up here again. But I, did, I didn't use a 32, because I'm is back. Is one of those going to be test? It's certainly possible. Yeah, yes? Can you go over that very first step? Okay. Uh, we are moving this step right here? No, above that, yeah. Above here? Yeah. Okay, now, when I taught you this in terms of trade, we landed up with, I think, this. Cosine squared x minus sine squared x equals 1. And when we did some work with that, we had three or two that came out of that. 
And um, do I have that right? Yes, I do. I think I have that right. Um, this here is one on that blue sheet, which is this cosine, and I did have it like that a while ago, of 2 theta. Uh, this isn't what I want. Okay, 2 theta equals 1 plus cosine. No, no, no. Okay, just a second. This is supposed to be squared theta is equal to that. And there's two of these here like this over 2. Now, I could develop that for you, but we've done that before. And that's not the thing for today to take a look at. Okay? Now, uh, now I'm going to move to a couple other things today. Uh, the first one is... What we want to accomplish is instead of taking our Riemann sums this way, we're going to take them this way. And it's not very difficult, but it is a little tricky. Now, um, the first thing off, we are going to do, 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 do this one here. This one we did yesterday. No, nope, this is the one we did yesterday. This one here we did. Okay, now, uh, we're going to do this one and run it the other way. And yesterday we found this one. Uh, what was the value of this thing? Sixty-four. Yes, we, yeah, we did. Because Aaron said, "Well, we just take this triangle here. Did it turn out to be sixty-two or sixty-four? Sixty-four. Uh, we're going to assume that it's probably equal to sixty-four. But yes. Um, when it shows you different graphs to know your two numbers you're going from, do you make the equations equal to each other then? Or how do you, because they don't give us the numbers on the assignment. Yeah, okay, I get you, I get you, yes. <laughs> and I have one like that, probably the next one. Okay. Which I want to teach you a bunch of, reteach a, a, a few interesting algebra things. Okay. Okay, okay now, uh, I'm going to run this thing this way. Okay, I'm going to do these rebound sums. And this is going to be delta y, not delta x. Okay, and I'm going to break it from this point to this point up here. Okay. And we're going to run this way. This is a positive. This is a negative. This is like this way. See, this would be on top and this is on the bottom, like we did yesterday. Okay? So now we're going to run from here to here. That, oh, um, okay? Now, um, ooh, I could show you a bunch of things here. Let me just do the problem first, and then I'm going to just sketch things out here a little bit. Okay, now, we're going to run from here to here. So my integral is going to be 0, 8. See, there's 8 up here. Now, uh, this function's on this side, but I can't have x's in here. I only have y's, and this is going to be a dy, because this is a delta x. Questions? This book doesn't emphasize that near enough. OK? OK, so that's that. Now, uh, this is my top function. And right now, it is y equals this. Oopsie. It says y equals x cubed, but I want, I want x equals, and so x is equal to the cubed root of y. See that? So I'm going to put here, I need y's, not x's. It's cubed root of y, because this is the x distance. Are you with me on this? Are you following it very carefully? This length here is an x length. That's an x length, OK? And um, what I have now is all of these, all of these up to here. I wasn't going to show you these right away, but I'm showing you. Now, now what I've done is I've taken all of these from up to here. But hey, notice this little space up here? I don't really want those. They're not in that section that I'm looking at from here to here or on this one. But we'll worry about that pretty soon because calculus take care of it all by itself. Okay. Now, the next one I want to do is get these Riemann sums uh, running this way, this part, those. And, um, uh, and also these, like here, see that? Because I'm going to run from here to here, and it's from here to here, but these are all negatives. The, red, the reds are negative. Running this direction is negative. Okay? So uh, I want them positive, so I'm going to change them. I'm just going to take, I'm going to subtract that. And now, what is this function over here? It's going to be, um, oopsie, I need to change that. This is y equals, so I'm going to make this x equals y minus 6. Solve that for, for the x instead. So over here, I would put the quantity y minus 6. Are you with me at this point? OK, I'm subtracting them. And the red ones here, these reds are all negative. 
The reds up here are positive. But I'm subtracting them. So my reds and blues are subtracting from each other over here like I told you about yesterday. Now, I'm showing you that, but you never have to worry about it because the calculus takes care of it all by itself, which is absolutely amazing, okay? But you should know what you're doing so you don't get into a lot of trouble. So now we have this, and this is really easy. Um, uh, it's easier than the other problem. Okay, what's this? Um, let me just rewrite it a minute so we get a little better look. This is y to the one-third minus y. May I make a plus six over here? dy. You with me? Okay. Yeah. What's the antiderivative of this? y to the... Very good. All over. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Okay? Right? Simple. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, DeVries. Especially My, when I'm doing it. I scored over two. Okay. Six and this is going to be 6y. And this is going to be from 0 to 8. Okay, now, you'll notice there's a 0 down here. And any time you have that, I'm running from 0, so I don't take anything away, so I can just ignore it. Because there will be a y here, y, y here. Just to show you what I was telling you about yesterday. Okay, now this 8 is just wonderful. What's the cube root of 8? 2. 2 to the 4th is 32 times 3 no, it's divided not. by 4. 2 to the 4th four is 16. 16. That's right. Good, good, good. Okay. I, I wish I could say I'm just testing you, but mm -hmm. I was. I made a mistake. Uh, this is uh, 8 times 8 over 2 plus 6 times 8. See that? This one goes out with this one. That's a 4 now. So there's 12. And this one goes out with 32. this one. is a 4 minus 32 plus 48, 48 equals 60 minus 32 equals 28. 28. And I said we had that. That's, I think, that's the number we had yesterday. Okay? And now we did it going this way. Okay? Um, now, let me just uh, point out anything else. I think I really told you it already. The blue ones here, we went all the way to the top. And um, uh, all those blues. And th these here, we didn't want. We wanted those out of here. We got them in with this one. But we took them out with this one. Yes? So if we just rotate it, can we just think of it as, oh, like the X just replaces the Y? Yes, there? you can. But be careful, because you kind of rotate it, not shifting this way, but it kind of takes a twist. And then that's the 28. Is that the area of the whole triangle? That, oh, good question. That is this area right here. Uh, yeah. Okay. All along here, like this. This this whole area here, not that that was in and out. Yes. Uh, we're not going to worry about that. Um, I'd rather, yeah. Maybe another day I'll talk about that. Um, here's another one. I came up with this one this morning on my own, and I kind of liked it because of some of the things that came out. I was looking at, can I design something that's really easy? Because some of the stuff in your book is not so easy, okay? No. Now, notice what I want. I want this area right here. No, 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 Kramer, you're not doing that today. I was doing something else. Uh, what I was doing on this problem is not that kind of thing. Uh, I, I forgot what I was going to try and show you. Uh, yesterday, you were asking a couple of questions. And one is, um, I, I really want this area, so I'm going to have to do it this way, right here. Okay? Now, um, I'm going to go this way, all the way down. These Riemann sums are running this way. Okay? Uh, and that's going to be this thing right up here. This is on top. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to take them from 0 to 0 oh, up here. Okay? So, Boy, I'm off to a really bad start. Um, what do I want to do here? Um, I want to... St okay. Uh, I want to stop right here. I, I want what's in this, this area right in here like this. This section right here is what I want. Okay? All right. I want that little part. All right. And uh, what's this point? Um. And that's what we had a while ago. Where we put these things equal to each other, like this. All right. 
Now, there's something in here I want to show you. How do you solve this problem? Square root of the square root of Square, and so we're going to have here 4 minus 4 square root of 2 plus x to the fourth uh, equals x. x. Okay, now look, look what I have here. This one, um, our Algebra 2 book didn't use this one very often, but I find some other books using it fairly frequently. How do you factor this thing? No and we'll put it this way, x to the fourth minus 4x squared minus x plus 4. That is an easy one to factor, and they uh, pop in a number of places, but especially in ACT tests. Okay? And this is one part, and this is another part. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, a fast, take an x squared out of here, and what's left is an x minus 4, and I'm going to take a minus 1 out of here, and then I have an x minus 4 like that. See that? Yes? Why is it not uh, x squared parentheses x squared minus 4? Is it x minus 4 or x squared minus 4? Yeah. Because if you're taking an x squared out of x to the 4, it would be x squared then. Because x squared times x squared equals x to the 4. Four. I didn't see that this morning. Yeah. Uh, then it's still x squared minus 4. This problem doesn't work that way. <laughs> God, I thought it, that was just too good to be true. Okay. At this point, we have to see this. This point is 1, 1, graphically. Okay? Back to the drawing boards on that one. Thank you. Uh, okay. Now, uh, in this case, I'm going to run from there to here, this point right here. Okay? And from 0 to 1. And the top one is going to be 2 minus x squared. And now I have to subtract this group right here, from here. I've got to get rid of these. But don't you just go up to 1? Pardon? Don't you just go up to 1? I should. Yeah, I went too far again. Stop at 1. Okay? So minus okay. square root of x. Okay, so it's going to be minus square root of x. Square root of x. Okay. Dx. Yeah. Okay? Now, you, because yesterday somebody asked about what happens if they are both above the line. Remember the question? Somebody said, what happens if these are both above the x-axis? Well, now you've got a picture. I really want to just show you this picture. I could do the, oh, let's do this one. Because the results, I think, unless I made a mistake again. Uh, I'm going to take the antiderivative of that is 2x minus x over 3. And what does that turn out to be? X to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. Okay, and we're going to do 0 to 1. And again, zeros are all zeros. So this gives me 2 minus 1 third minus 2 thirds, which equals uh, 1. So the area is equal to 1. Yeah. At least that works. Okay. What if there's three lines? The Pardon? With what if there's three lines? Yeah. Oh, that, oh, uh, DeVries. Oh, I'll do that on Thursday. Well, we have that on our assignment. Yeah, I know. Well, well so yesterday. Will that be on the test? Um, yeah, well, yesterday, yesterday you had three lines where one was the x axis. Yes. Okay. Right? So that will work. Uh, okay, the next one. Let's see what time is it. So, um, I would like to do. Um, another one. Let's see. I think um, let's take a look at this problem with. Okay, th here we have three lines. Uh, we're going to do um, this this problem like this. Um, this equation is y equals x to the two thirds. Now, some of these with this thing are pretty important as we get later in terms of two-thirds can sometimes give us uh, um, a point uh, and uh, maybe this book has it that way, I'm not sure. Now, what he wants to do is um, uh, also use the equation running this way and um, he wants this area. Okay? So how is that? And um, I think this is the one in the book. Let me just check once again where I got this thing. Uh, this is on page 387, 387, okay, 387, and Aaron yesterday said, okay, instead of doing some of this stuff and figure this one right here, we could find the area of this thing, and in the book this is 4, 
and this is four, and this is a perpendicular line. So what's the area of this triangle? A. Okay, that's eight. Okay, so we're going to go from here to here with this equation. We're going to go like this, from zero to, and this is um, eight units long, I believe. Yeah, this is eight. That's from zero to eight. So we're going to do all this and just subtract this away, and this is going to be x to the two-thirds dx like this, and then just solve it, well, minus eight. That's the answer. Okay? So now we have three lines. Here's one, here's another, and here's another. Yes? So that's on our test, but not the... Not the, not the ones this one. Okay? We'll do a few more of those on uh, Thursday, beginning class period. Okay, now, uh, the next thing I want to do is to show you something in terms of Riemann sums, and um, let's take a look at this. Uh, watch what happens as we're going along, and um, uh, notice I have the equation y equals x to the third, and in this case, I'm going up to 1. See that? And um, now, uh, I would like to do the calculation of Riemann sums here and um, also do some calculating and do the interval. All that stuff at the same time. Now, I have a few things on the side here to make it go fast. B minus A over N is equal to my delta X, and so that's going to be these little lengths like in here, like that, okay? And then I say, well, I'm going from 0 to 1, so that's 1 and that's 0. And so 1 over n is equal to delta x, because we're going to make n divisions here. Okay? And we're going to do it first time on the right side, like this. So we're going to do all of these like this. Okay? These are the ones we're going to do, and the one all the way up to here like this on the end. So I've got that all written. This is 1 over n cubed. That's this height. And you notice I put this in the back. Anybody have any questions on this? Because we're going pretty fast. Okay, I'm adding all of these heights, like these, like that all the way through here, like that all the way over to this one. And the last one, we're going to take this side, so that's n high, and so we have all these, and this is 1 over n. Okay, then, first semester, we looked at this thing here, and I chose this one because this works so nice. 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed is equal to, it's just like, oh, what's the other way? This is n times n plus 1 over 2 quantity squared. That's the sum. Okay, so, now, um, see, I believe I'm going to do you a calculation first, then I'll do something else. Uh, okay, so what I have here, I have 1, I'm using the tops. 1 cubed plus 2 cubed, are you with me? All the way to n cubed. Yeah. Times what? And minus one over n plus one cubed. N? Four, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I thought. <laughs> There's a cube here, cube here, cube here, and one here. Yep. Okay? Now look what happens. When I do this, uh, this sum right here, watch what happens here, that equals this. Now, I'm going to say this here thing is going to equal this. I'm going to change that just a little bit and write it this way. n squared times n plus 1 squared all over 4 times 1 over n to the 4th. Are you with me with that? So then it's just 4n to the 4th on the bottom? Yes. Okay. Well, like of what you just wrote, it'd be like yes. n Yeah. Okay, this could be canceled with this and make this n squared. Um, with me? Okay, this top goes n squared plus 2n plus 1 all over 4n four. Four squared. Cancel. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take the limit of this as n approaches infinity. Making it into infinity. What does this turn into? Huh? Zero. Oh no, oh no, oh no, no, no. Zero. You know what this answer is. One. One. Oh, you're infinity. Supposed to infinity. Yeah, there we go. What? Yeah. This is n squared over n squared. I have taught you this at least two, two or three times each year. Algebra 2 I did in terms of n behavior. When n gets very large here, like this. And if you wanted to see it in more detail, I'll do it over here. I have n, or excuse me, 
uh, x squared plus once again, n squared plus 2n plus 1 all over 4n squared. Divide everything by n squared. With me? No. This becomes 1 plus 2 over n plus 1 over n squared all over 4. What happens now when n goes to infinity? That's a zero. That's a zero. That's a one. That's a four. So it's a four. Okay. That's review for the exam. Okay. When is the exam? Okay. Now. We, okay. Okay. Next question. You see what happened here? What happens to this? I'm going to go from zero to one. My, my function is x cubed dx. What's the antiderivative of this? Fourth over four. 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 Which equals four. one four. One four. Okay. Now I'm going to show you one more thing with this, and uh, watch what happens, which I think is really, really amazing. Okay. You notice here I took Zero. upper sums. Now I'm going to start from the other side. Okay. I'm going to start. With this one, mm -hmm. I'm going to start with the left. Okay. okay, here's the left. Look what happens. We're going to go from the left. I'm going to go 0 plus 1 over n cubed plus dot, 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 plus, what's the last one? What's this one? 1 over n. No, it's not. It's n minus 1 over n quantity cubed. To the case. Because, see, I'm doing this side. I'm going here. And that's number right here. See that? And now all of you wanted to put this back here, and that's good. Yep. Okay? Now, now watch what happens here. Every one of these is less than. This is less than what I was doing a while ago as I was doing uh, over. Okay? Now look what happens. Some of you are being kind of obnoxious. Okay? Yeah, really. Okay, look what happens here. This is a zero. So it's one cubed plus two cubed plus dot, 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 times n minus one cubed, times one over? N. N to the fourth. Why, okay, why is it n to the fourth on Because the there are three and here. No, yeah, on the top, the, on, yeah, that one. Why is that one one over? Okay, the fourth? I probably should have written it this way for you. One cubed over n cubed, yeah. plus two cubed over n cubed. See, these are all cubed. And here, are, these are all cubed, and this well, is... Why'd you, why'd you put that one to the fourth and on the bottom? The one over n to the fourth. Right now. Right now. Right now. Okay, uh, Grant, here we go. Plus n minus one cubed, uh, yeah, over n cubed. Okay, now I can factor an n cubed out of all of these. One over n cubed, see that? Now these are all out of here. And there's one over n on this side. So you just take out all the denominators. That's right. With and they're n to the fourth. Or a cubed. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now look what happens here in terms of this formula right up here. Okay. My last term is n minus 1. Okay. That's this number right here. Mm -hmm. Because see, that's the last term here. That's the last term. This becomes what? N. Okay, and this is, by the way, squared, which I did a while ago, and this is squared, and now all over four. You with me? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there's, there's supposed to be, this is here too yet, times one over N to the fourth. So you should take N squared out. Okay, N squared out. Now look what happens. Hey, some of you are not focusing on this. Uh, when I saw this thing the first time, it really convinced me of how calculus works and what the idea of limit is and interval. Now I'm, see, the first one I took everything larger, and now I'm taking everything smaller, and look what comes out at the end here. I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of this, this number right here, which is n squared minus 2n minus 1 all over n squared. There's a 4 down here. What's this limit equal to? One fourth. So you see, so you take undersized or oversized 
when you go to infinity, they come right together. That is amazing. Okay, and now you get an idea again how these little Riemann sums are working. And what we're going to try to start doing on Friday is doing some rotating of these things, not shifting this way, but rotating them around the axis. And it's not that difficult, uh, but it is pretty amazing what we can do. Okay? Um, now, uh, anybody else have a question? Number nine. Number nine. Here we go. Uh, it says, the region bound by that and that and four. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, Debris, yep. what does x equal to four look like? It's a straight one. And that's a four. Yep. Okay. And then we have here uh, y equals two x plus two. Yep. Right? And three okay, and so that's going to be up here two and it runs this way. Yeah. Okay, that's the, that one. And the next one is going to be 3x plus 3. Okay? And that is going to be um, like this. Yeah. Steeper. And now I have to come back down this way to stop it. And so I'm going to do these little ring on sums. Okay. So it's going to be integral from 0 to 4. Okay? And is this, oopsie, this is the top one. Yeah. Now look how easy this turn, turns out to be. Okay, that's there. Now what must I do with this one? Minus 2x. What about the 4? So you get x minus 1. So x minus 1 to 4 is what you get. Uh, yeah, okay, anybody that needs any extra help with this? Look at how easy that is. I mean, it, it's really, really simple. And it really looked tough to start with. Okay? Uh, anything else? Uh, Are we done?